worries, everybody. Um, I'm Claire Pranice, and this is the Society of Illustrators virtual uh, Saturday Stories program where we join illustrators and author illustrators in their art studios from wherever they are in the world. And this morning, I have the great pleasure of introducing you to Matt James, who is a multi award winning illustrator up in Toronto, Canada. So we are having the pleasure of seeing him in his art studio, and he'll give us um, some behind the scenes of his fabulous book, Tadpoles, that he's authored and illustrated. And this is a little nod to our weekend for honoring fathers, uh, tomorrow's Father's Day, as you know. And this is a lovely story that sort of honors fathers. And, um, in, you know, we can see the tadpoles here on the, on the front cover. It's a very lively um, art style that Matt has. And I'll tell you a little bit more about Matt in just a moment. So for those of you who are joining us again, uh, Saturday Stories is our monthly series, and um, it started in 2018, actually at the Society of Illustrators for in-person workshops. And then during the pandemic, we went to a virtual program, and this actually uh, expanded our opportunities to meet more illustrators who weren't in the New York area, but all over the world. And um, also for um, participants to join from all over the world. So we've had um, participants joining us from parts of Asia and Europe, even on different time zones. And that's super exciting. So do pop in the chat where you're joining us from. And if you have questions throughout, write them in the chat. And then during the workshop part, when um, Matt will be doing some live drawing, I will filter your questions through and ask for you and he'll have fun answering your questions. So um, a little bit about Matt. Um, Matt was um, a, a child who was really um, excited about going out into nature. And he also used to trace comics, which I know a lot of you who are budding illustrators probably like to do as well. It's a great way to learn how to draw is to trace over comic books and things. And he also used to use a tennis racket as a guitar. I bet a lot of us have done that as well. So Matt is a painter, a musician, an illustrator, and a writer, and a very good one at, at all of these things. He's done many um, albums in his, with his band, and he's done many children's books, some that he has collaborated with other uh, writers. And his very first few books won amazing awards. He's won the um, Boston Globe Hornbook Award, um, the um, Governor, um, what's it, what is that one? The Governor General's Award and the New Mexico Book Award, um, the Ezra Keats, Jack, uh, Keats Award. And that was for his first book that he author illustrated, The Funeral. And um, um, so Matt has a very, very lively, energetic illustration style. And I really love how he works. I, I've seen some of his YouTube videos, which you can also check out later. Um, he grabs all kinds of interesting art materials, um, scratchy ink pens and paints, and he works over in layers and he work on any kind of surface. Um, so you, as you know, for this workshop, we suggested that you found old cereal boxes so you could just like use the cardboard from that and paint on there. Um, if you don't happen to have paints for this workshop this morning, you can just use whatever materials you have that might be colored pencils or crayons, markers, but then this will go up on a recording on our YouTube channel. So later you can revisit it and maybe you'll have some paints and you'll try it out um, with some paints at another time. Um, so without further ado, um, as Matt's going to read the book for us, and then he's going to take us behind the scenes, tell us a little bit more about himself and how he got interested in doing art. I will be asking more questions throughout. We're going to have a really fun morning. And so without further ado, over to you, Matt James. Thanks for joining us this morning. Morning. Uh, this uh, cow uh, was, uh, you know, the sort of emblem, emblematic of uh, my hometown, Woodstock, uh, which is, you know, I grew up in an agricultural sort of town. Well, my, my town, or a sort of agricultural area, Woodstock was the big city, uh, which was, you know, a small town by today's standards. 27,000 people lived there when I was a kid. But so I think of it as a small town. At the time, it was the big city. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, my brother worked in the parks department. He would always uh, have to paint over this cow because would, people would write their name on it all the time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was a world champion uh, buttermilk producer. 
you might be interested to learn. Oh, that's a little like <laughs> inside scoop about you. Yeah. There's a, that's my son Noble in my, in the backyard of, uh, you know, where, where I grew up. When I was mm -hmm. a kid there, the whole yard was all uh, treed. It was forested the whole block. Um, oh, wow. So it was a lovely place to, uh, to go out and learn. It was sort of like a natural history museum in my backyard. My, my parents mm -hmm. would teach me all about all the plants and animals, the flora and fauna that, that were back there. And, you know, we had a mm -hmm. snowy owl one, one couple of days, one winter, one particularly cold winter. We'd had foxes and moles and voles and frogs, all kinds of stuff. Uh, and but then uh in 79 a, a big tornado came through and uh wow. and totally changed it broke off almost all the trees and uh mm -hmm. that was pretty in like as a kid i didn't quite understand uh, how devastating it was for a lot of people some of my friends i think you know even lost their homes and stuff uh but to me, it was just kind of wild how this forest now was a pasture and uh, now there's tall grass and a whole different kind of ecosystem happening. Mm -hmm. uh, this is me and my classmates somewhere near there. You can see all the broken off trees. Uh, there was kind of serendipitous right before I started working on tadpoles. My mom ran into my grade two teacher Miss Beveridge, who uh, had taken these photos and had been, you know, hanging on to them, and uh, she passed them on to my mom and and asked me to, uh, you know, share them with my classmates, and they were great uh, sort of inspiration for this book and and reference material. That's me in the middle there with the kind of plaid shirt on. I think we're making uh, like play doh or something out of uh, like homemade play doh mm -hmm. with uh, flour and flour and water. Yeah, those yeah, curtains yeah. and uh, in the back and the spider plant kind of make their way into the classroom illustration and tadpoles. There's me and my dad. It's my favorite picture of the two of us. Oh, it's a photo of. Love photo. that picture. Yeah, I like that. We were mm -hmm. at a, a borium. Is that the right word? Like a tree museum that day. Yes. Yes. And, yes. Uh, we we're learning all about different kinds of trees mm. and, uh, so yeah when I started thinking about this book uh, tadpoles I started off thinking maybe I should write a book called the pond and then uh, and then I thought well maybe it should be the ephemeral pond and then I really you know, I love that name I thought it sounded like like Edward Gorey you know him oh yeah I love Edward Gorey yeah and uh, I love that little frog hiding behind the uh, the drain spout there and uh you know the idea that you know this rain is coming down being collected by different people's you know eaves troughs and and how and how it gets kind of rooted and then the water moves from one place to another and becomes this pond uh, mm -hmm. and then but then i talked to uh, neil porter at holiday house and he he sort of gently uh, directed me towards uh, you know a new a different title tadpoles. This is a you know a first kind of rough I did. I think I ma I made a painting so you could see the the sort of red background bucket was a painting pretty similar to the actual cover. And then I just used Photoshop and a mouse to like you know add in these blue blobs and this guy. So often I'll just as you were mentioning before. Uh, that I use a lot of different materials. Uh, yeah, I'm not too precious about trying to make something that looks great right off the bat. I'm just trying to, you know, solve a problem, figure out what I want it to look like. Yeah, so you I, really evoke a feeling. I mean, those tadpoles are moving. Did you, did you use um, a reference? Did you have a bucket of tadpoles to look at? I didn't have a bucket of tadpoles. I had this old <laughs> design book. Uh, I mean, I had been looking at tadpoles. My sons and I have been uh, mm -hmm. going and counting so tadpoles. Mom. Yeah, and they reminded me of collecting them as a kid. Yeah, uh, drawing from memory, yeah. Yeah, and just the fun and just movement, just trying to, 
you know, I was actually drawing raindrops one day and then they look like tadpoles and so on. Uh, yeah. my, my boys were, you know, especially Julius, the guy with the red bucket there was kind of the perfect age to get uh, um, recruited as a model uh, for this book. So we're headed off to a uh, high park to where we would, you know, if we're lucky, we might see some tadpoles. Uh, this is another place called Ratche Marsh nearby. There's Julius. He's looking at a, a red-tailed deer there, which is not a common sighting in mm. uh, in the GTA. There he is again. Uh, I love those. Something about kids' knees sticking out of a pair of uh, rain boots. <laughs> we want to want to draw it. That red bucket. Who doesn't want to draw a red bucket? is again uh this is high park grenadier pond looking at the cranes in the background the city growing always growing more condos coming up in toronto all the time so you know that's sort of inspiration for for the book which is you know themes are as much about change as they are about about nature you mentioned I did stuff on cereal boxes. This would be a cereal box. It, you know, it was during the lockdown, I was afraid I would be uh, unable to get art supplies. So I, a bit of a natural art supply hoarder as it is, and I started drawing on cereal boxes and stuff. So there's that kind of skyline. Yeah. And this is another cereal box, uh, Frog. Uh, yeah. My mom, uh, my, my, I think the first present my dad gave my mom when they first started dating was this little beanbag frog, and it had that pattern on it, and it was always on my, their uh, their dresser. So I always, I, memory kind of uh, serves as sort of fuel for a lot of my artwork, just little details that don't really necessarily mean anything to anyone else, but sort of help me sort of stay kind of in love with the art as I'm making it. Mm. Um, it gives it your style and uniqueness. Yeah, and I think it's just, uh, for me, it's important that I kind of care about the art. Uh, yeah. Not too much that I get precious about it, but, uh, you know. That, that it's exciting to be working. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love around. this. Trying That's to awesome. figure out, yeah, what what is the story going to really be? Maybe there's going to be a mm -hmm. giant blue frog. I think I just wanted that <laughs> rock to be in the forehead, foreground, but it ended up looking like it was giant. <laughs> I need to like take some lessons on perspective drawing. It's a different story. It's yeah. like what happened when the totally. tadpoles grew? <laughs> yeah, here's another different story. Like where the you know the heron did make it in, but I was going to have him as a real like antagonist at one time. Oh. Uh, there's a giant yeah. blue frog again foreshortening Actually, i think was, sorry go ahead well i just i, I when uh, we were looking at the the book when you were reading it there was the double page with the heron in it but i noticed there was a little frog's feet lean off the side of the page which was yeah really, that's right you have a lot of surprises in your artwork as well I try to uh, I try to make it so that if you look at the book again, you won't, maybe you won't catch everything the first time you read it. You do. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I think that's just a photo of my computer screen. But I was I would have drawn that with an iPad. Mm -hmm. I just like the motion of that. Yeah. Uh, at first, I really really wanted this book to be kind of have a lot more like marginalia and science information, like. Uh, or I was toying with that idea. So I was going to have like, you know, the kid mentions the Nimbus clouds, but I, I was going to have like a diagram of how, you know, the air flows, how, in, how clouds are formed and really have a lot more of that information. And mm. over time, I just decided I, I guess the story just evolved to a point where I, it didn't seem necessary to. Yeah, it's almost like uh, another book. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Some more, uh, just trying out different things. Here's like, yeah, th I think that's just uh, in, in a sketchbook, you know, drawing some, trying to see how I can, you know, play with those shapes and, you know, combine, you know, find something interesting. Uh, 
Is, yeah, just I, I just put this in because, you know, I know a lot of kids might just have pencil crayons and uh, not have paint. So, you know, there's something I did with a pencil crayon way back, just trying to get this idea down. Years ago, I was up in the Yukon and uh, it's the nothing but woods in between Dawson City and then Alaska. I don't know how far it is to Alaska, but hundreds mm -hmm. of miles. And uh it's 24 hour daylight. So you can, after work, you could go walking through the woods and you would find, and there's no settlements, but there were old like shacks and stuff. And I found this old, there was a piano just in the middle of nowhere. And, uh, wow. and the elements and the weather and stuff had totally done a number on it, disintegrated it to the point that it was just this sort of skeletal, like, but there was still piano strings and stuff and the wind was blowing through it and making this eerie sound that uh I always wanted to I actually thought it would be a great animation you know with like birds and frogs and maybe acorns falling from a tree yeah that would create music on the strings and stuff but uh mm, now it's okay. just a page <laughs> <in the> book. <laughs> uh you know simple drawing mm -hmm. but it made me laugh enough that you know I'll find a way to fit that. More iPad drawings, just messing around. Yeah, I like those. I like just the simplest. You can do really sophisticated artwork on an iPad, but I like using the, the most kind of finger painter-y uh, things mm -hmm. I can use just to get quickly get ideas down. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you can just anything. It's amazing how you can represent a shape just for, or represent something with a simple shape. Like I know, you know, those are tadpoles, even though they're just circ little circles. Yeah. Uh, just another iPad. So there's like kind of getting closer to what the tadpoles look like in the book. Uh, I like that. Just kind of a washy, like that yeah. washy thing. I think that was, these next yeah. couple of pictures were the first sort of things I sent to Neil, I, my editor, and uh, is that a painting, Matt? Is that a, or is that on the iPad? That, that's painting. This is a, these are like yeah, paint real paintings on. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. This one yeah, would have been on a cereal box. Yeah, pen and ink and gouache. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, yeah, it's, you it's very loose, and I wasn't, especially because this is just like you know. Uh, uh preliminary artwork i wasn't worried about you, you know using art proper archival art supplies so i think i had um white paint that was like water soluble like water like wash maybe white wash in the back mm -hmm. which which uh and then i was putting acrylic paint over top of that and it does this it kind of reactivates the gouache in a way that doesn't happen with mm. acrylic paint you know scratching yeah it's beautiful yeah, you, I really love that one. you really yeah, get the atmosphere of weather so well in this book. Yeah. There's another thing. I, I was thinking of the kid in the front's like a cutout, um, like a piece of masonite that I cut out with my scroll saw. And mm. uh, I like the way it looked. I just couldn't figure out how to get it. It just didn't work with the book. Sometimes you, I love an image, but it's just not helping the story along. Mm. It's another another early drawing how to draw a kid with a bucket mm. I, and I kind of toyed with the kid having a brother or a sister at one point but it worked out better just being a single mm -hmm. uh, these are all painted in a similar way to that sort of bluey stormy one but, mm -hmm. um these are the, you you mentioned uh what was it the studio ghibli uh dust ball things when we were talking the other day, uh, these tadpoles, I think, really, really look. Oh, like from Howl's Moving Castle, yeah. yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Those do for sure. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, this was that title page, you know, where it says tadpoles, and there's all the tadpoles. This was like the early version of that. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an example of like using an iPad. Uh, you know, I, the background is a real painting. And then I take a picture with my phone or whatever, and then just draw over top of it with my iPad app. So oh, right. you helpful. would 
barely see there was a picture, you know, a photo behind there. It's yeah. definitely been interpreted by your artistic uh, painting. Yeah, anything to kind of just speed it along, you know. Mm -hmm. Here's some more just quick drawings, trying to figure out how to start the book, you know, kids starting mm -hmm. his day. Nice. That turn, you know, turn into that. Yeah. And it's, it's like, really oh, sorry? No, I was going to say, it, it's a lot of like, uh, just, just to tell the audience, you know, that how much goes into the thought process of working on the whole book, because it is 32 pages that you have to tell the story through. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, yes. Like, I, I think for me, you know, some, you know, some people are really have a lot of like sort of chops, some illustrators, they can kind of get their they're really good at drawing what they have in their mind. For me, I, it takes a lot, you know, I probably fill up 20 or 30 sketchbooks before I Which start getting somewhere. Which is amazing, somewhere. Matt, because your work is so fresh, so lively and energetic. It's like, it's your first idea, but actually there's sort of like, you've got, met, all of these ideas are good, you know? It's like, how do you even choose which one? Yeah, but, um, no, no, I guess it's just a feel. Or and I start to yeah. look at them together with like I line them all up and yeah. see if they're working together. Yeah. And yeah, some yeah. things I just get embarrassed by. Like I kind of like that, but the anatomy is oh, so wonky. Uh, yeah. So that's where I get Julius to come and be my model again, you know. And then that turns yeah. into this was actually this is one time a little study made it into a book. So I just was quickly trying to capture Julius at the door there, and I really mm. just in my sketchbook. And then I just I just took that and digitally put it over top of a little cutout of the door. Yes. I cut out on my bandsaw again. And then I used Photoshop to like do that little reflection. Reflection, yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that, yeah, I've never that was the first time I've ever done that. Like, and I felt kind of guilty about it. Like I always should um just have real paintings in my books. And then I thought uh -huh. That's this is where digital thing. is very helpful. So it's yeah. good that you're dabbling. Yeah. yeah. I just want to give you a little time check, Matt, because it's gone 11 and I don't know, we could just sort of uh, finish up seeing your behind the scenes. Soon. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll zoom through. I'll just do a quick run through. Gorgeous pictures. Um, I wanted to show mm -hmm. this just quickly, uh, you know, just because you were talking about um, doing a lot of art you know, in order to find the right one, you know, the silo mm -hmm. scene or in the book, I, I did this rough and I rolled up a piece of paper and I uh, just took a photo down through it. It was a three-dimensional thing. And I really love that. And I thought that I really wanted to make that the way it would look in the book. It's also, um, it's a one time where it goes back in time. So I wanted it to have a different look from the rest of the book. Or it's like a, mm -hmm. it's a memory. Oh, uh, yeah, so I started, I, I, I made all these things to cut out little characters. And uh, just, to, just to show, you know. Yes, I love the screen animation. Oh, I yeah. love it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, oh, all these different things. Maybe I should do that. Mm -hmm. Try that. No, that's not working. It's very cool. Try that. Then it became a painting, another painting, oh, another wow. painting, another painting. Uh, I think there's one more. It's yeah, you know, and none of those made it into the book. So uh, that's just part of the gig, you know. I think, you know, yeah. it's something for people to kids to remember that you can't, you know, if you're making art and you doesn't work out you know that's okay just do do some more yeah 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 wow um, so that I, I love how you made the models because that creates the shadows and all of that that you need to sort of yeah that's that's another idea for kids to think about you know is making little sculpt you know sculpy characters and drawing them you know because that's a way to bring your characters to life it's yeah. it's so much it's such a fun way when you um when you don't know uh or you know when you're not sure what to do or like i find you know it's it's easier i like to make stuff up draw from my mind yeah uh because then yeah. it then it looks unique but uh yeah. making a little model can really help or just using yeah. an action figure or whatever it doesn't even have to be a model it 
just be yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. whatever. But yeah, so should we uh, go over and uh, like kind of make some yeah. art? Is that, is that I think we is? could. We, we could. Yes. I mean, you can do. As you can see, we're in Matt's um, studio, and he's yeah. got lots of um, different materials and areas that he works in. He's yeah. It's like yeah, a, right. a, working, a working illustrator studio right there. <laughs> yeah, it's not totally. just in someone's home. That's like got a lot of materials. You just want to go in there and start working on art, Matt. It's yeah. very inspiring. <laughs> totally. Uh, are you? What are you? Are you seeing my uh, phone? Oh, yeah. yes. I can see your desk set up. I just saw okay, us cool. on. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Hey. Uh, so yeah, this is. My studio here, lots of art on the walls, stuff for new books. Yeah. Piles of sketchbooks everywhere. Oh, I want to come and do a workshop in your studio. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. <laughs> yeah. That's super yeah. shy and reflective. Like oh, wow. Weird, uh, weird bird named Gerard. This painting's called. <laughs> Don't take them all, Gerard. It's kind of shiny, <laughs> so. But he's, uh, he's, uh, he's taking all these fish up into his UFO. His UFO, yeah. This is my, my uh, drafting table. Sorry if this is making anybody dizzy. <laughs> uh, you know, this is where I keep all my paints. I got a big drawer full of green, green and blue paint, and then Mm -hmm. Another drawer full of yellow paint. Yeah, it's yeah. good to separate your art supplies, kids, you know, into colors that, that where you can yeah, find. Yeah, I find that really helpful. It's kind of like, you know, it just makes it easier. I, I was going to make an analogy to a sock drawer, and then I don't think it really made any sense. So that's why I thought. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, now lots of, lots of different pen nibs and stuff. Uh, I love using these uh, dip pens, which I'll show you a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, but yeah, this is my, I'll do a quick walk down here. Let me know if you can still hear me. Can yeah, you hear me? still hear you. Okay, um, cool. I'm just, um, let's see. So Steph, I hope you your screen is working because I think, oh, we've got a few people with a black screen. I wonder why that's happening. Um, I don't have that problem, so I'm not sure why you might have that problem. Should I uh, um, keep on going? Tim will try to help with that. Yeah, just keep going, I and mean, we can see it, and we're recording. So that's the great thing is that um, if for any reason some of you are having a little glitch with your um, reception, we will be putting this up on our Society of Illustrators YouTube channel, so you'll be able to see this again. I'm so sorry if you're having trouble, but we don't really know why because we can see it. So it might be something to do with your connection. But yes, we, we were being taken through the back of Matt's studio. And now he's also showing us the, a quick glimpse of his music room. So he's also a, a, a musician. So. what you're seeing, until, uh, Oh, yeah, we're seeing the inside of your drawers, you know, you've got your uh, paintings in lots of these drawers where they're kept. Yeah, it's really, you know, artists often have plan chests with big drawers so that they can keep their artwork flat. Um, we've got a little art gallery here where Matt's got his artwork up. Um, oh, uh, we just got whale. <laughs> it's cool. All right, so now we're back at your work desk yeah. and we'll, we'll do a little bit of artwork here and then yes do ask more questions and um i've got a question already whilst you're getting set up sure. um, so jody asked um a very good question um so do your editor and art director um work on approvals and suggestions and help make changes before your finished artwork is submitted um, um yeah it's Sometimes is the answer. Like they definitely, you know, when I, sh I'll show roughs to, to the editors and they'll definitely give me their thoughts on the roughs. And then 
And then as the art, then I tend to just kind of show final art. And, um, yeah. uh, and uh, you know, yeah, they'll let me know if there's something bugging them or something that's not working. Very often it's more like, I'm asking them, do they think, you know, some part of a illustration is working or is, are they bothered by something that I'm bothered by? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that answers that question. I mean, while you're setting up, Matt, I'll just sort of say a little bit about what I know about that. And that is usually um, editors and art directors, they seek out the correct or the, 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 the illustrator that they feel will be a great match for someone else's book. Of course, if you're the author illustrator, like for this book, Tadpoles, Matt did um, the story and the um, illustrations. Um, so they'll see how the story is evolving and leave the illustrator usually to start thinking of ideas that they're gonna to add to the story in the images. And that's why sometimes you don't see everything written in, in the uh, text. You don't necessarily need to describe what somebody is wearing because you can show that in the picture. So the art director might be more um, helping with page layout, like where's that text going to be fitting, um, just moving things around a little bit sometimes. But usually I, I would say they've gone to great lengths to find an illustrator that they want to work with because they absolutely love their style. And so they give them quite a lot of free range. It's not like they're going to be directing them through every single page. It's just sometimes they'll have uh, wonderful suggestions, which really helps the book to become even um, better. So it is sort of collaborative, but also a lot is left to the illustrator's imagination and their style. So. And Matt has an amazing style and to have won awards with his first three books right out of the gate is amazing. And um, Matt actually got discovered um, to do books because he was in an, he had an art show and um, people come around and look, they're always seeking, you know, who might be the new talent. So that was really wonderful. Um, so here we are, we're, we're seeing like in the screen, um, so maybe, um, Tim, if you want to just highlight, spotlight um, Matt's desktop, and then the rest of us can be small on the side. Is everybody seeing Matt's desktop large? Maybe you are. Let me see. Yeah, let me know. Now I see my midsection and... Uh... <laughs> okay, so we need to go back to highlighting. <laughs> All right, Tim, can you just highlight um, Matt's desktop? Is that good? That's great yes. for me. Can everyone else see okay. it? Okay, that's it then. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's get, I hope, so hopefully you've got your art materials handy, kids. And, and um, do send in any pictures. Like if you can have um, a parent either scan your artwork or take a picture with the phone and then just email it into me at Society of Illustrators. And I will share that with Matt. He would love to see whatever artwork you come up with. Yeah, so cool. we really love to see what you come up with. So do do that. You know, if you're into drawing frogs, tadpoles, we want to see your versions, see how you create your, your characters. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I've been collecting, uh, you know, cereal boxes, as I mentioned. And, uh, you know, I'm going to use um, my paint. I use this uh, acrylic gouache paint uh, and I'm going to use some ink and and, uh, and my paint brushes but I just I did this this morning using pencil crayons I used um I don't know if people would have pastels I just had like a white pastel that I I put down first and then I just drew pencil crayons and uh, you know made a little you know so this is just an idea of what you could do using what you have but uh mm -hmm. you know, I'll I'll try drawing something similar to uh, that using what I normally use. So I've got more uh, cardboard and stuff here. Uh, I often lately I've been using uh, I don't know if you guys have a comic store nearby, but uh, you can buy these pieces of paper that uh, or cardstock that stiffen up the uh, comic book packs and. Uh, mm -hmm. They're really handy to draw on too. I, I collect bits of like a, uh, yeah, like that. You don't want to buy that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thing. Uh, 
But yeah, so, you know, to draw something like that kid in the raincoat, I'd probably start off by painting, using some ink. And uh, where's my ink? I'm going to be put to the test here. I mentioned that, you know, it, art doesn't always work out on the first try. And uh, it might not. Oh, wait. Hold on. So I use a little, I have to do everything backwards. So I use a little palette, you know, so I might just draw, oh, hold on, this is weird. <laughs> I'm uh, like uh, drawing in a mirror, shaving in a, in a mirror. Hold on, what's the, what's the best? Is it okay if it's sideways for you guys? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do do it, and then um, we we can see that what you're working on. Okay, and cool. Yeah, yeah. So I'll just like you know lay down the background really fast. Sometimes I might uh, just squirt ink right on there. Especially you know it's a fun thing about doing a book when it's rainy and 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 watery. You don't mm -hmm. you don't have to be careful the way you have to be when you're doing um, something that's set indoors uh you know with right angles and and uh yeah yeah furniture and stuff yeah, yeah just, i love how fluid your weather is it's just oh, yeah yeah so i was like you know i might just start doing something like this putting a putting down some paint and uh you know if it's rainy sometimes i'll uh even at the beginning because i might use the back of my brush and start putting in like sort of what might eventually be raindrops. And then as this dries, there's these little kind of troughs for ink to pool into and stuff. You know, I, up on my ceiling, I've got a, a blow dryer. Uh, so if I'm working here, I won't do it now because it'd be really loud, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll dry, I'll, I'll paint for a little bit and then use my blow dryer to, to dry the ink. Mm -hmm. Today, since yeah. we're in a rush, we'll do what's called wet on wet, you know. So uh it's like wet paint over top of wet paint. And uh <laughs> we're, it's, we're not really in a rush, I guess, but uh we don't have all the time in the world. So you know, we'll see what happens when we start drawing a raincoat. Just kind of put one arm there and another. It's very Oh, I'll count. Yeah. Anyway. Is that better? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So, you know, I've got all kinds of paintbrushes and they all have different uh, uses. They're mm -hmm. all for different purposes, but I don't really know what those really are. <laughs> so I just kind of use what everyone looks cool to me at, at any <laughs> given moment. Right now I'm using this, which I think is called a filbert. Yeah, it's called a filbert. And mm -hmm. uh, you can, uh, I guess what's neat about it is the marks you get out have a round edge. Mm -hmm. Like the, the front part of the mark will have a round edge. Other brushes, which are square. Give you right. A square line. Right. But, uh, Good for tadpoles, maybe? Yeah. Around Yes. <laughs> the best ones for tadpoles are uh, uh, these uh -huh. uh, bamboo handle ones. I find because they're it's all it's the most like drawing or it's it's hard to um control. Uh, mm -hmm. And I like things that are hard to control. That's how you get like uh, mm -hmm. spontaneity. You know, uh, it's not showing up there. I need to get some black ink. But yeah, hang on one sec. What's that sepia? There's some black paint. Um, so I'm gonna draw, now I'm gonna draw this kid's uh, rain boots here. See that? And uh, yeah, and then maybe I, I could draw some little tadpoles, little tiny guys. Probably won't, should I get in closer? Mm -hmm. uh, so the wet paper is just kind of turning the tadpoles into little smeary blurs. So that's not working. That's how you, uh, the process of trial and error works. But this would be a really good, um, I realize now 
that's a really good time to work on a reflection when that's when the water's all when the paint's wet like this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll put some more ink down, and then I can uh, put some yellow reflections in it. It should look pretty cool. I put some yellow ink into. It's kind of just turning green because yellow and blue make green. Uh, but if I try that, mm, now I got to put some of that white in this guy so it makes sense. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this is how my paintings kind of start. You know, I let that dry and then. Uh, you know, then I might start very carefully uh, drawing with my pen and ink over top. Uh, you know, trying to see. You know, here here's a painting where, you know, uh, wait, where, there, where um, it started. You know, very loose, and then just the line, the lines on top are what tighten it up. Yes, yes, yes. So once it's dry, you then go in and with your ink. And yeah. do the yeah. yeah nice. Oh, it's nice and fun to work that way because then you're having a, like a nice loose background, and then you can go over with your pen to draw the outline. Um, totally, and yeah. a really a great thing you can do too if you have a phone. Like that's where iPads are neat. If you're not sure how you want to draw the lines, I might take a photo of it with my iPad, and then I can practice drawing mm -hmm. the digitally before I before I do it. I mean, that's a little, I like to be braver than that, but sometimes if I really am happy with the, the way something's looking, I'll be a little bit cautious, especially if I have a time restraint. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna work on this wood just for the heck of it when it's wet, just to see what happens. I don't think I can quite, maybe I can get his, if I dry this off with my brush a little bit, I can, yeah, it's just soaked up some of the wet paint where I'm gonna put his face or her face. And I'll let, that'll help speed it up a little bit. I realize I need my red bucket, so then I'll, yes. <laughs> Get some red paint out. And put that that in then. Oh, what a good red as well. <laughs> yeah, what's it called? Uh, cadmium red medium. Yeah, cadmium red cadmium is sort of a nasty chemical, but it really makes beautiful red. Um, mm -hmm. There are other non-cadmium. It's the stuff that's in batteries that people are trying to get rid of, you know? Uh, yeah. Oh, this is why I, I was going to wear my, uh, I usually have like an apron. That's why, because I always get all my clothes. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, well. The true sign of a painter. <laughs> yeah. Totally. All my <laughs> shoes have paint drips on them. Actually, you're flawless. Looks very clean, Matt. For well, you, you know, know I, painted it, I painted it very recently. I should show uh, you one after photo. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine it was <laughs> yeah, covered in. Uh, it becomes an art form in itself, like the floor. Yeah, it looks like a palette. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah it like a palette. Awesome, yeah. But it started yes. to um, kind of encroach on to, into my psyche. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> like I need to clean it off a little bit to start start fresh. Yes. Uh, so let's see, sometimes I'll also use I've got this um just like a spray bottle and I'll put some like diluted paint. Uh it's not seeming to work. Uh, uh, that could create diluted some paint clogs it up. But I also have this quite cool old fashioned device. Um, what is that? So it's like an old fashioned 
it's like before they had airbrushes, they had these things. You uh, oh, oh, end right. of it in, into the ink like this, and then mm -hmm. you blow. Oh yes, yes, you blow it. See, did it? Can you see how? It, can you put pan back a bit? Oh, pan up, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, well, now I see red foam, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's hard. Maybe yellow wasn't the best color to demonstrate with. Maybe if I do it over. Uh, you can see. Oh, it. yes, yeah, yeah, it does have like a airbrush effect. Yeah, <laughs> it's great for um, like just texture. I use it more like for like if I have to paint sand or if I have to paint, you know, concrete or something. But you can see it even in this painting. I'm, I think maybe if, I can't hear you now, Claire. Did, uh, are you having a lag? Oh, no, I, I, no, I was just listening to you actually. I was, oh, cool. um, so yeah, so I could imagine it would be good for sand and things. I was actually just thinking when you were demonstrating you know another technique to create uh, a texture for, for some of the raindrops did you do like anything that was sort of like splattering very watery paint to create that I mean it, it looks so rain like it's almost like you took it out into the rain it's very yeah, real so I did. just wondering I, I used that, that's where this thing comes in handy when it works but um you know what I would basically do is splash really diluted water uh, or mm -hmm. ink. So I take a lot of water and then mm -hmm. just throw it on, just throw it on and then let it, you know, let let it happen. <laughs> and, uh, you know, again, you've got to be a bit brave because you can trash a painting. But um, this will, when it dries, you'll see these, um, I'm trying to see if I can, it, it, it'll, It'll be much more muted, like uh, it. So you can you have to do it in layers. But I splash down these mm -hmm. layers of diluted paint, and yeah, the raindrops. Mm -hmm. I kind of I did them a, a lot of different ways. I, I in some cases I just draw, you know, would just draw whatever that teardrop shape. Um, yeah. But I also used a ruler and did like some sort of like fine like try to draw these sort of straight lines of hard rain coming down, you know? Yes, uh, yes. But so I would use a, a ruler and maybe some white paint or I don't know, we'll see what happens with this like pencil crayon. Like I would just kind of hold the ruler a little bit loosely so it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just kind of make these parallel lines. Oh yeah, wow, that's so cool. Yeah, and it kind of, if you do it when the paint's a little bit wet, it, it um, yeah, it drags the paint to make it, yeah. It paint, which is a fun thing. So it ends up being like a lot of, and then another thing I do is uh, scratch certain areas away, uh, which won't work that well right now on, on cardboard. It might just tear the cardboard, but sometimes I, go and like scratch stuff in or like, you know, use a knife. There I got mm -hmm. some, I've done that with the red, but uh, a drag yeah. brush, red paint. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to have you come to the Society of Illustrators and we'll supply all the materials for our workshop and then you can, everyone can have a go. I hope um, some of you in the audience, um, if you didn't have paint with you for this morning, we'll have a go at doing this um, at another time and check out the video again so you can see all the layering that Matt does to create textures and really, and if you get the book Tadpoles, which I highly recommend, just look deeply into those um, images because there's so much to look at. They're so layered and um, the creation of weather is so stunning. Uh, actually, Jody, who was curious about the, um, manual airbrush that you were just sharing yeah, yeah. wonders if you could get it still do you, do you think I you can get them on yeah. ebay or somewhere yeah what, uh, what would it be called uh it's called what is it called an air i don't even know what it what it's called this one was made in france i just found it in some uh art mm -hmm. supplies that i inherited 
but you could buy them. Is it called an atomizer? I think it might be called an atomizer. Yeah. And, and um, you you used to be able to get them at art supply store, or you know, un, up until mm -hmm. fairly recently. The guy I uh, mm -hmm. you know, Ralph Steadman. Like a, yes. Oh my job. gosh! Yes, ink spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he, he. I watched something on him, and he was using one. And I realized mm -hmm. I had one of those. It's in a box, ah. and I didn't know what it was for. <laughs> and, uh, oh, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, well, so. yes. So we've sadly, very sadly, come to the end of our Saturday Stories hour this morning. And I know uh, that was so inspiring. I, I can't wait to get some materials myself. All I had was um, some crayons and some black paper. So I was having a go at some weather. But just use whatever you have. Just have a go. You never know what um, materials uh, really make you happy. So you might like to work in um, pastels, crayons, you might like to work in uh, paints, you just have a go at different materials and keep drawing. We'd love to see what you do if anyone's drawn something this morning or does it over the weekend. Do, do send it into my email, which um, Tim put into the chat. It's claire at societyillustrators.org. Um, follow Matt, uh, check out his website. You can also see um, some YouTube videos if you put Matt James illustrator, author, and you can find some things on him there. Matt, what book are you working on next? Where, what, what's exciting things are happening? Oh, lots. Just I, share with that. I've got a <laughs> book called uh, I'm Afraid, Said the Leaf, uh, which is a Tundra book uh, mm -hmm. written by uh, Danielle Daniel. And I'm just kind of finishing that up. And then there's yeah. another book with Holiday House, uh, uh, like I kind of maybe three books that I'm working on at the same time. So. Um, there's going to be oh, a lot wow. of Matt James books coming out. Or, well, Matt illustrated wait. by Matt. Yay, excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We're getting so many lovely thank yous in the chat to you, Matt. Everyone's really enjoyed you, everything you shared. It was great, Matt. Thanks so much. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Great. Thanks. Oh, my gosh, so many thank yous. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you, everybody, for joining us. And as I said, do check it out later. If somebody that you know would have loved to have joined but couldn't this morning, will be up on YouTube um, probably next week. And um, don't forget to get tadpoles and check out all of other uh, books that Matt does. Um, thanks again, Matt. It was really a pleasure. And I hope to see you in New York in the future. Yeah, thanks a lot. Take care and have a great rest of your weekend. Happy Father's Day. And happy Father's Day to other dads out there. Um, make some cards using this technique. <laughs> Yeah, have fun. Don't sweat it. Just make a mess, but clean it up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Take care. Bye, Matt. Thanks Bye. so much. Bye.